Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I meet a person who is a painter, but it's kind of like a painter illustrator type of thing. If you see their work, you'll know what I mean. We start the conversation where I just kind of talk about how they began, how they started painting. And it takes a weird turn where I find out just six months ago, they had like major surgery. And it's something, it's, it's something I didn't expect. So we actually kind of talk about that a little. Um, it's, yeah, it was, and then uh, we talk more about uh, how they make books and they've uh, started publishing children's books and actually have been doing it for a really long time and are working on another book that's kind of a coffee table book that features their artwork. Uh, it's a fun conversation uh, and here it is starting right now. <laughs> My name is Mike Filipello, and I'm an American folk artist, oh, American artist, um, and author, and I'd like to say illustrator because I've, I've written some books I've illustrated myself. But um, yeah, I'm just, just another guy trying to make it in the art world, basically. So do you mainly work with paint? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, I, and I that's mostly the... work with acrylics. Okay. And that's yeah. that's the thing is like over the years, like when you see books or like children's books or picture books, there's some that are painted. And I mean, that's considered illustration. I guess I've never really tried to define illustration before. There's, there's hand-drawn illustration, there's graphic yeah. illustration, but I think painting can be illustration. I think so. Yeah. I just did that. I, I considered it illustration. Cause I was like, I put the, I put the, the, the story to pictures. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's like conveying it, conveying it from words. And then, from picture or from words into picture. Yeah. I guess it's kind of the same thing. Okay. And also, yeah. uh, where are you located right now? And I mean, I know you're in your car talking to us for people watching the video, but where <laughs> in the world are you located in, right now? Uh, Hendersonville, Tennessee. Okay. And you were, we were talking before the show and you said you used to live in New York. I used to live in upstate New York. I'm originally, I was born in Lyons, New York. And I spent the last, until uh, 2021, I lived in Canandaigua, New York, and the, it's in the heart of the Finger Lakes wine country. Okay. Yeah. If oh, you so look on the map of New York, between like uh, Rochester and Syracuse, well, actually Buffalo, you'll see the Finger Lakes. There's just like this, it looks like little fingers on the map of, of lakes. And, okay. and we lived in Canandaigua for 24 years. Now, so you just recently moved to Tennessee? Yeah. Uh, last year. Well, okay. no. Uh, 2000, 2021. So this will be our second year. Okay. Why the move, if I may ask? Well, my, um, it's kind of a long story, but my, um, I've been married for 28 years this year and we always lived close to my family and my mom passed away in 2014. And so, um, I'm not really that close with my dad, but it's kind of a long story, but um, I don't know, it, you know, dynamics change when you lose a parent. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, you know, we've always spent a lot of time around my family. So when my sister-in-law moved down here and besides there was so many other factors from New York, it was, it, it was kind of difficult maintaining, um, the house and with taxes and, you know, all kinds of different things, right. just several different elements that brought into it. And so we just decided it was like maybe time for a new start. Okay. So we, so my sister-in-law moved down here in 2020 and then they were here for about a year alone. And since then she's, she's managed, she, we call her the family recruiter. <laughs> <So> she's, <laughs> brought, she's brought her, her sister or her brother-in-law, another brother-in-law, another brother-in-law, is it three of them. So it went from two people to basically like 18. Wow. So all of you just ended up moving there because <laughs> of yeah. the sister. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and that was mainly what I was wondering is like, I, I'm always fascinated by what makes people leave somewhere they've been for such a long time ago. And then we moved here, you know, like the yeah. specific location. Like I'm always interested, like, is it the community? Is it like the living wage is, you know, that sort of thing. And, and I always find that kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, we're, we're just outside Nashville. Um, the city that we live in Hendersonville is a really a growing community. Um, you're kind of in, this is like, probably like, I would say 
not having to been to other suburbs of Nashville, but this is a, a really big suburb. I mean, there's like a lot of a lot of people that live here. I'd say I think the population is like seventy thousand, so it's not a not a very small place. It's not a huge place, but it's not a very small place, and it's growing. Okay. So, it, it's and it's a nice place. Good. Nice place. I'm glad. I I would yeah. hope it would be. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty pretty good. Yeah. Now I'm I've, assuming I've had a lot of change since me personally. I've I've experienced a lot of change since going down here. Um. Uh, earlier this year, or earlier in 2022, um, I I was kind of sick, um, and then in September I had to have surgery. So I'm like still in like this recovery mode, I guess okay. in a very small way. Okay. So I had to have my stomach removed. Oh goodness! My whole my whole stomach. Really? I, have, I, literally, I literally have no stomach. Nothing. There's no stomach in there. How does that? I I don't. That's I don't know if I've heard of such a thing. So how does that? How <laughs> does, if, if you're okay to talk about this, I am curious. Yeah. How does how does that work? Well. Um, many years ago, I'd say probably about 2007 or 2008, um, when we were still living in New York, I, they, the doctor discovered this like little polyp in my stomach. Okay. And so through the years they watched it. Okay. It's, you know, it's this, it's that. And then about 2010, it grew and it like multiplied like three times its size. Okay. So they were like, oh, you know, this is, you know, it could be cancer, da, da, da. Mm -hmm. And they didn't do anything about it. So, and that was in 2013, because 2010 was the last time I had it checked. So in 13, they were like, I think we need to take it out. But I was 47 at the time. And they were like, it's a big surgery, so we're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. So every once in a while, I was having it checked. So when it, when we came down here, um, earlier in in 2022, about, about the springtime, I started being like really tired, like all the time. And, um, you know, I would walk the dog, I'd walk up a hill, I'd be out of breath, I'd stand up, I'd be out of breath, I'd be dizzy. Um, what had happened was I become anemic because this, th what these polyps that were in there were growing and it, my, my stomach was like literally lying like a carpet. Okay like carpets and uh there were several masses in there and so i went and had it checked and they were like well, this has got to come out because mm -hmm. if we don't take this out those polyps could turn to cancer and you'd never know it it would just run right through your system and it, okay. could, it could kill you so they took it out in september september 26th and um i was in the hospital for a week and then um that seems like a short amount out. of time <laughs> for such yeah. a thing yeah wow well i've got i've got the scar i've got uh i had 39 stitches or 30 yeah 39 staples okay and it runs right up and you know right up in the middle of your thing here in your okay. chest and uh so they took my entire stomach out and what they did was they took i think it's my small intestine or part of the intestine i'm not sure if it's large or small but they took that and they sewed that up and made that my stomach. Amazing. So I've had to learn how to eat all over again. So it's really yeah. been, a re I'm, I'm already, I'm already wound a little tight for lack of a better term. I'm already <laughs> a little, you know, and yeah. um, so I'm still in the process of like learning when I can eat and when I can't eat and when okay. to stop and when to go. So, okay. So it, it's been, it's been a challenging time for me and, and it's been, I think it's been a hundred days since the surgery. Cause I, I've been keeping track of my wife's like, listen, you hit three months. Stop counting now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, no longer an excuse. You're good. <laughs> but to me, I mean, it's like, you know, I get, I get things called, I call them the sloshies, like in the back of your throat. You okay. know, when you get Understandable. Yeah, your esophagus, my my esophagus had a lot of learning to do. Right, um, you know, through the course of time, you continue to heal, uh -huh. and, uh, and you just, you know, you just, you get better. 
Well, I love the, uh, you, you have, you seem to have a very positive mental attitude and I, I like that. Like the fact that it happened this soon ago, soon ago, this recently, uh, it, it's, I like that you're able to talk about it. That's really cool. And on the other side, I mean, one of the, th so <laughs> it's funny how we got into this conversation because what I was going to ask you about was, um, moving from New York to Tennessee, I was yeah. curious if you were already painting and then brought that to Tennessee, or is this something you started recently? Like, how long have you been painting for? I've been painting since about 2002, I think, about 20, 21, 22 okay. years. Yeah. No, I started painting when we lived in Florida. We lived in Florida for a year. Okay. Um, back in 2002 to 2003, uh, we moved down there. It was... It was like a year after 9-11, and uh, we had a really difficult time. We lived in Kissimmee, just outside of Orlando, and uh, we had a really difficult time finding jobs and everything down there, but mm. I love Florida. I mean, Tennessee is very nice. I mean, everybody here has been really great, and it's, it's yeah. a really, it's a nice place. Um, but in Florida, it, it, there was a little different energy, because we lived, we lived in Kissimmee, and I worked at Universal Studios, which I loved. Oh, Best nice. job I ever had, ever. And uh, I was like, wow, this is just, you know, I just love this. This I, I was actually, I'm, I'm a guy from Lyons, New York, okay? You can't, I mean, it's a, it's a tiny little place. You know, you look at the, how big the world is, and you're like, okay, where are you from? Lyons, New York, okay. You might as well be from Mars, you know, because mm -hmm. nobody's ever heard of it. Right, but when I when I went down to um, uh, to work at Universal, I mean, I was a paid actor. You know, I got paid to scare people at Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> I was going to say, what was the character you did? That's yeah, awesome. and I loved it. I walked in, and they were like, "Man, you're just weird enough to have this happen." I was like, "That's the first time I've ever gotten the word weird as a compliment." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, "All right." I love it. So I did it. And I, I just, I had the time of my life. Best job I ever had. Okay. So you had been Wonderful. painting around this time. What would you, what would you say is the style of what you make as far as the paintings you do? Uh, I, I, there's a distinct style, but I'm wondering what you would call it. Well, it's a compliment that my, that my style gets, I mean, people always tell me that my paintings look like something grandma Moses would make. Okay. So to me, that's a, I mean, that's a huge compliment right there. Yeah. And um, I've had people tell me that my style is unique and that it's identifiable. If you see one of my paintings, you'll know it's by me. I'll agree with and that. That's yeah. What you, that's what you want as an artist. I think yeah. that's what they tell you. <laughs> right. But do you have a specific, like what if people ask you like, oh, what could, you know, you say I'm a, I, I'm a painter, I'm an illustrator or an artist and they go, oh, what type, type of stuff do you do? How would you, how would you? If you had to do your elevator pitch, for lack of a better word, like what would you say? You'd go, oh, I do this. I'd say I do um, whimsical landscapes. I like that. Yeah. yeah. They're, not really, they're not really whimsical, but they're whimsical in the sense that um, they come from my head. I make up the painting as I go along. I compose. So they're not actual landscapes that exist? No. Okay. No, some are some I've done some by request of people. I've done a couple of um, commission paintings that they sent me all these different pictures to put in the painting of buildings or whatever like that. But the, when I sit down and make a painting, it comes out of my head. Okay. Yeah. And how did, so how did you get started with that? What, what made you go? Here's what I'm going to paint. It just happens. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's just an happens. honest answer. When, I buy when that. I sit down and paint. I never, I mean, I'll, I'll sketch it out. Sometimes I'll, I'll have sketches of what I want to do or my ideas or whatever. But then when I sit down and paint something totally different could come out. So your process really is just, I feel like painting today. And then you just kind of start. Yeah. Okay. So you don't yeah. really plan anything out or go like, I need to finish a few of these or anything like that. Or, it's it, like, how often would you say that you do work on creating something and how many pieces do you think you put out over the period of a year? Well, in the past year, it's been kind of difficult. Um, but Understandable. 
I've been trying to like right now, I just started another painting just the other night. So I'm trying to get back into it doing, um, you know, like eight by tens. I have an Etsy store, so I'm trying to reload that. Mm -hmm. And then I really want to do an art book, like a coffee table book. Yeah. So that's, that's a project I'm, I'm kind of, the, you know, the process is moving in that. Um, I've been looking at publishers and maybe publishing it myself, but you know, anything that requires a financial, a financial resource for me is kind of difficult because, you know, I got to work to pay the bills. So I don't really have a whole lot of financial resources to pull from to say, okay, well, I'm going to spend $500 on, you know, creating this or a thousand dollars on creating that. It just, I just don't have those types of resources. Right. I don't think a lot of artists do. Yeah. 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 So the term starving artist is really quite, quite fitting for me. Okay. (laughs) No, I don't look like I'm starving. Do I? (laughs) (laughs) What, what, uh, what's the, what made you think of the book? What's the the purpose behind the book? Like, why did you go? I think I'm going to make this book. Well, just because the idea that, um, I've had a couple of people say that I should do it. But I don't know. It's just trying to get get out there, you know, just trying to get my name out there a little bit more. I mean, over the last 20 years, um, I've been very lucky. I've been published in, some, in a couple of magazines. I've been published in the paper, the local newspapers. As an artist or as, a, as an illustrator for books? Both. Okay. Both, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I got published in uh, 2007 in art business news as an emerging artist. And, um, in 2013, I licensed a painting that was published in a calendar in Japan. Oh, cool. For 2014. Um, but you know, those, those are just little blips. You know what I mean? If you look at, oh, yeah. you know, just little blips of things, I'm trying to find the, the point where it starts and just keeps going up. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. That's what and, I'm trying to find. And you've you've done children's books, haven't you? Yeah. Okay. So how many children's books have you done? Well, the very, very, very first book I did was an ebook back in two thousand one. Um that didn't ebooks just didn't take off. They didn't yeah. it didn't it didn't do anything. I mean, I think I sold maybe couple of copies just didn't and in 2001 they were really just still like pdfs you know they were there were no ebook readers or anything where you could actually consume them like a book i think that made a huge difference in it okay so you did that all right yeah um but then in 2004 was it 2000 2004 2005 i published uh mirror tambo moon song which my which was my first book um and But see, the thing is, is that the publisher I worked with was a POD, publish slash print on demand. Yeah. So unfortunately for me, the books were really expensive. Okay. So, you know, I had this great publishing deal and all these promises, but I didn't have the audience. Yeah. So, yeah. So then like, and then. I, I was kind of like blinded by that because I really want, you know, I, I, when you publish a book, it's glamorized. You know what I mean? Like you see, you know, you see somebody like on TV and they're like, oh, I published a book. And, you know, it's all this, you know, people are standing in line, you know, I didn't have mm-hmm. any of that. <laughs> like, oh, oh, you wrote a book? Oh, that's nice. Hey, they got <laughs> cheese on sale over there. Right. <laughs> you know, it just, that's kind of what it was like. And then the, the, the worst part, is is that if people want to buy the book, you pay twenty five dollars, and no one's going to buy it. unless you're J.K. Rowling. Right. No one's going to pay twenty five dollars for a book, especially a children's book. Especially, <laughs> especially a children. Right. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't even matter if it's illustrated. They're just. It's like no, no. Right. Five dollars, ten dollars, maybe twenty five. Yeah. You're you're out of the ballpark. Right. Not going to happen. As somebody who resells books, even vintage ones don't really go for that much more. <laughs> yeah. They go around the regular price. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of dead in the water, really. You're in the yeah. water, but you're kind of dead in the water because, because the way it's, 
the way that the system, their system or their company set up, whatever like that. But then unfortunately for me, I went back to that publisher two more times. Right. And had two more books published. And now I don't even think they're in business anymore. So, <laughs> Man. So, so yeah. why are you continuing to look to do this coffee table book? If that's well, the, the coffee the table book is, is of, is of my art. Okay. That's, that's the, that's the difference. I do have a book that's published on, or that's published through, um, what's, what's it? Create space. Okay. And, um, it's a book I uploaded and I, I published it myself. It's called the house of top hat remembers mm-hmm. a journey through Christmas. And that you can look at that. That's on Amazon. Yeah. So, th- so that is, well, this is the, um, this was the sixth Christmas. It was available. And, and that's just been a little, you know, little couple blips on the map again, you know, of sales. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the first year it was out was probably the best year. I probably sold maybe, I don't know, 40, 50 copies. If nice. that, okay. you know, you know, publishing like any other thing, you got to have the name. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're some, you know, I say JK Rowling cause she, she, she could write on a napkin and sell 50,000 copies of it. She's <laughs> JK Rowling. Must be nice. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? You know? Yeah. But you know, the rest of us, I always say that everybody else, you know, to get their fire started, they got a blowtorch. I'm uh-huh. out there rubbing two sticks together, trying to get a spark. Right. You know, cause that's basically how it works for me. <laughs> it's right. not an easy life. <laughs> well, and you had said that you've even started your Etsy store up and, or you are refilling it. You've had the Etsy store. How's that been going for you? So you've been selling things online and also, are you also selling in public or how's that going for you? Well, being, since we moved down here, I have only done one public show and it was at a restaurant actually not too far from here, but it was, I didn't have much time. They, the decision to have the the show, we'll call it, was like three, four days before. Okay. So I didn't really get a chance to do much of anything. I went in there, I set up a table, and that was basically it. Um, what I did do, um, uh, uh, reselling or uh, refilling my Etsy store, um, I do a couple of years, about three years ago, two, three years ago, I started making these little ornaments. They look like a little. Oh, house I saw those. Right? Yeah, yeah, those are what I've been selling uh, through the uh, the Etsy store, and then I did like the the wooden cookies. Hmm. Um, I sold those. That was that's last year and this year, and maybe a little bit, little bit the year before. Okay. So those are because those those keep my artistic those those keep the paintings going. You yeah. know, that's my style. It keeps the paintings going, um, and then. You know, when that wears, when that, when the holidays end, then it's like, okay, um, what else have I got? So then right. I go back to doing the bigger paintings. I was just going to say, cause those, those ornaments stuff. are seasonal. So yeah, right. they, they have a specific shelf life as far right. as sales. Yeah. Right. And, and I get that. That's kind of like refueling for doing the major projects you want to continue to do. I understand right. that. Um, how so, do you promote the stuff that you make and like, how are you letting people know, say when you're doing the ornaments that you're doing these or when you're doing the paintings that you're, you know, how are you promoting those things? Well, a, a lot, social media, Okay. a lot, uh, Facebook, Instagram, I'll take pictures. I upload it to Instagram, to Facebook, to TikTok, to LinkedIn. Um, I have a blog. Um, Mike Filippello at wordpress.com. I've got a couple of uh, fan pages like Maple Sky Dream Tree fan page or uh, like a art group on Facebook. So, you know, just those few things. What do you do to get outside of, say, the circle of friends who already know what it is you do and where you're at? Well, that has, I haven't done that yet. Okay. Really. With everything like health wise that's been going on this year. Yeah. I mean, there, there was times I just, I would sit down and want to paint. It's like, I just don't feel good. Yeah. So I could see know, that. Yeah. So even, so even though that's a, 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 hopefully a past tense thing, hopefully now I can, 
you know, January to me is like a new beginning because it's like, okay, now we're in a new year. Yeah. Let's get going. You know, let's, let's start moving towards something. So like when I had, when you, when you emailed me about this opportunity, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is a fantastic opportunity. This, this guy does podcasts. People listen to podcasts. There's mm-hmm. a lot of them out there and people listen to them. I hope so. And, <laughs> yeah. And even, you know, even if it's, you know, um, my, my, um, my WordPress site, I went back to it and I was like, what am I doing? There's nothing here. But then I was like, you know what? Just start posting. Mm-hmm. Just, just start posting. You've been very active on it. I've been, I, I mean, I've seen your site and yeah, you post, you post quite frequently, which is a good thing. Yeah. And I'm always trying to come up with something. It's like, okay, I didn't really do anything today. Today's not an exciting day, but what can I post? What has meaning to me that somebody else might be able to say, okay, oh, sketchbooks. Okay. Mm-hmm. You're always having a sketch. Yep. Okay. Write down about a sketchbook. Great idea. Sketchbook. Always yeah. have your sketchbook. Honey. You know, um, Sometimes I'll, I'll write about a memory, you know, um, I've, I've, I've been so lucky that I have one of the first shows I did back in 2004, 2005, when I was actually, when I was making a lot of bigger paintings, 16 by twenties, um, I did this art show at a school in, uh, in New York, it was a, a neighboring town to Canandaigua. And um, this lady came in and I had this big 16 by 20 painting set up on the floor by an easel. So it was standing up by an easel. Okay. And this lady came in and there was people going all people, you know, when you're in school, people milling around, you know, just walking around. And this lady went like this and looked down at, at this painting that I had. Okay. And was captivated by it. She's like, I have to have this painting. I think I sold it to her for 40 or $50. Mm-hmm. It didn't care. I didn't care about that. I mean, I could always use the money. That's, right. that's my mantra. They'll write that on my grave. I use the money. But <laughs> this woman was so captivated by my painting. She walked out of the door bumped into other people because she was too busy looking at my painting to see where she was going. Wow. That's I, really cool. It, that, it, it just, I, I think about that and it's like, she was, look at, look at, she, she almost walked into a wall. She could have been hurt, but she was looking at my painting. You, you can't get a bigger compliment than that. Yeah. I just don't think you can. It was just, it just, it, it's, it's always stuck with me. I'll never forget it. That's really cool. It was a really <laughs> like cool experience. Yeah. Nice. Huh. Every, and, every artist in the world wants that. Exactly. And, and, and me, lucky me, I got it. I got it. Now with the things that, uh, so you said you're hoping in the new community that you're in to do more things like that place you just described. What are some of the plans that you have in the future for what you're doing, like it being the new year, what are some of the things coming up in the future that you are hoping to do or things that you are doing that you, you could tell us about? Well, definitely the, um, definitely the art book. And then, um, I'm, I'm planning on making more of the little houses. Mm -hmm. I've got, I've got a couple of ideas. I, I call my, I call myself Maple Sky Dream Tree Studio. That's like the name I have. And I'm thinking about like these little wooden, I don't know, these little wooden houses, maybe putting them together to form like a street or something like that Yeah. and calling it Maple Sky Dream Streets. And then there's a few local places that carry local arts and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm going to research those. Um, yeah. There's a place in the next town over called Goodlettsville. I'm going to research. And, you know, it's just now you've got to take some of your ideas and put them into a different category, a different way and see what you can get out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, see what happens. I'm still going to keep painting because that's that is my absolute passion. I I just love painting. But uh, but exploring some of these other things is what I plan on doing, too. Just to see. 
just to see what, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make those income streams, you know how they talk about those passive income streams, right? You know, but I don't know. I don't and, know if that, I don't, I don't want to do things cause I'm money motivated, but I kind of have to be money motivated because, yeah. you know, how do you, it, it's, it's a double edged sword when you're, when you paint and you love it with a passion, you know, how many times have you heard somebody say, oh, you know, some musicians, they are like sellouts because, oh, he signed a record deal and blah, blah, blah. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's part of the dream. Yeah. Not, not that you want to be a sellout. To get paid for doing it. But to get paid for doing it. Yeah. And yeah. doing it for yourself. Although I suppose being a sellout, you're, well, maybe you are. I don't know. That's a that's a hard one to define, depending on what the sellout standpoint is in the scenario. But yeah, I get yeah. what you mean. Yeah. And just the other day, I went. We went to the Hobby Lobby. We have a Hobby Lobby. The next plaza over. Yeah. And I walk in there, and in January, you walk in, and they have the whole rack of calendars. And I, and that's that's the dream. I yeah. I want to do a cal I want to have one of my calendars for sale. Oh, I yeah. want to say, I, for a brief second, I thought you were like, it would be your dream to have a whole rack of calendars, like owning them. And I'm like, what? But you meant actually having <laughs> <laughs> being, no. uh, your calendar being there. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I just, I think about that I, every year I've seen that. And it's like, it's one of those things. It's like, I've always wanted to see that. I've yeah. always wanted that. So, <laughs> you know, you have to, it, it's always your if you're if you're passionate about something, you're always looking. You're always trying to find how do I do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's constant. Okay. And if yeah. people did want to find your things and how to do them, you like that little transition I did there? Uh, where Very would nice. you say that they? Where would you say they go to check out your stuff? I'd say right now the Etsy store would probably be the best place. It's it would be artist Mike Filippello. Artist Mike Filippello. Gotcha. Yeah, people are like, what's your last name? It should really be Smith. Right. Because people can spell Smith. But Filippello, they're like F-I-L-A-P-E-L-O. -L -L. Yeah. It's not that, I wish it was that simple, but it's not. Right. It's F-I-L-I-P-P-E-L-L-O. -L -L your parents couldn't have done anything about that? <laughs> no. My, my grandfather used to spell it F-I-L-L. -L. I P P E L L. My father brought it down to one L in the beginning, but it's still a complicated last name. It yeah. gets me in trouble. Yeah. But, I but that's that. life. Well, yeah. I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. It was great meeting you. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.